Hey guys, Mike, Iron Trap Garage. We're at the warehouse because it's time to unload from our trip from New England. Um, we got back late last night. Um, so today we're gonna unload. Uh, Matt and Steve are gonna be here in a minute. They're gonna help me unload the trailer. They are gonna take the trailer back to the shop, unload the 39 that's inside and some of the stuff that Matt's keeping and the flathead so we can work on that. So let's get to work. We got a bunch of stuff to up unload. Obviously once it's upstairs, show you guys a little bit of what we got a little bit more in detail because obviously we didn't show everything that we pulled out as we were doing it. So let's get to work, get this unloaded, and get it all upstairs. All right, so we got most of our stuff organized and kind of divvied up, but whenever we do this, I usually found that it's best if I just right away skim off the stuff that I want for myself uh, or that we need for the shop with supplies or whatever, consumables. Um, and then we don't have to worry about like going through the stuff later. So we'll walk you through like we always do and show you some of the highlights. There's a lot here. There's stuff still in bins and boxes that we just, there was a lot of smalls this time, so it wasn't worth getting into too much. So. We'll start over here. So we got this really cool, we dug this out of uh, the first place. This was like wedged between two workbenches and was filled with all kinds of like new bearings and, and grease seals for all types of cut stuff. It wasn't like the original packages for this really. So we cleaned it off. It's actually not too rusty. So this would have had all kinds of different ignition parts um, on it. It's originally like a Napa brand, I believe. Um, but super cool, it's neat that it's a tall one like this. You don't see them as often. You see the shelf, uh, the tabletop or shelf once. So got this, really cool. This is probably something that we will just uh, sell. I, as much as I'd like to keep it, I'm quickly running out of space in the new shop and uh, I don't really have room for it, so. Don't have many ignition parts to display? Ah, uh, whatever, I just don't have space for it. Uh, we got this, um, one, because we kind of need another set of cabinets for Parts. Steve and I have been trying to work around the shop and get all of our stuff for putting cars together organized, whether it's hardware or it's like brand new Ford specialty stuff, seals, bearings, whatever, tie rods. And we've been doing a good job, but we're already kind of running out of drawers. So we need to kind of organize some more. So I grabbed this because of that. It's all rusty in the top because the building was leaking. So it's not like it's really a, a, a mint piece, but the other bonus was it was filled every drawer with stuff. So we went through, found some neat stuff that we pulled out, we left some stuff in the drawers that like we could use, like shackles and random stuff. So that'll go back to the shop and get put to use and stored. That'll be cool. Uh, this is a pair of 36 fenders that are pretty complete. They're in so-so condition, um, definitely saveable. These were kind of thrown behind that uh, 39 um, convertible sedan that we purchased. Uh, basically, we bought the car and all the parts that were thrown in it and around it came with it. So um, after we got everything out, we realized these were 36s, which is cool. Um, so obviously these will get disassembled and sold. These front inner pieces here are kind of desirable. We usually part these out a lot of times because the parts are harder to find than the fenders themselves. So the headlight brackets and all that different stuff. So Mike will work on taking that apart. We'll usually have like a waiting list of people looking for 35, 36 fenders and fender parts and stuff like that. So those will get put to a new home. Yeah, we got this Model A cow that um, I believe was at the first place. Um, if we think it might've been woody. Just I believe it is based on these little wings that come off the side. Yeah, so we believe this is woody. So it has some woody specific parts. The cow itself, I believe might educate me on this, but the same as truck. I think, I'm I not think. sure. But I'm not sure, but we're pretty sure it's woody. Um, the guy's place that we went to, he had a little bit of woody stuff. There was no woody vehicles left. He had sold his car, cars 
uh, but this was there. So we figured we'd save it. It was in a corner that was getting very, very wet. I have a feeling it was actually in a lot better shape before it was in a corner of the building that was just getting rained on, unfortunately. But we saved it, and now it can get used for somebody's project. A um, couple of transmissions, 39 Chevy Trans. Bunch of manuals. We cleaned out a cabinet at the one place that was all kinds of manuals and books and stuff like that. So we're going to go through those. Those are always good to have. Some of them are GM, Mopar, all kinds of stuff. Um, I'll probably pull a couple of Ford ones I need, but the rest of this is... I don't know if we actually bought any Ford. I think they're all Mopar and GM. Finally, we can sell something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there's like Cadillac. There's all kinds of stuff in there. So these are great to have for the diagrams and all the stuff. It's great. With the internet, it's really nice because you can Google a lot of stuff, but sometimes having a repair manual that has those schematics or blow-ups or part numbers and stuff like that, you can't get that information anywhere still, and these books are very, very valuable. So we've been trying to save a lot of paper goods like that that I think is important because I know with the Ford stuff, it's good for me, so it's going to be good for everybody. This is roughly a 40 Ford Woody or bunch of parts of it. It's like uh, uh, two thirds. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. There's like three doors, um, really nice B pillars. There's actually some pretty solid parts on here. There's also some parts that are completely junk that would be good for patterns. Um, we had this, this panel here, which we haven't fully identified yet, but it says 46.8 on it. And we're kind of thinking it has some latches on it. Kind of thinking it's for Woody. But again, we haven't fully identified. I'm very new with that stuff. So we'll have to probably ask for some help from some friends. Um, but this was just, they had a trash can full of this stuff. And some of this stuff's really good. They could be reused, like for instance, like this is, it's dry there, but the inside's like pretty decent. So we figured either for patterns or for guy that's got a survivor car and maybe, you know, the car sat in a spot where it leaked and this piece is totally wrecked on their car you can get an original piece and, and maybe save a car. So we figured it'd be good to save as much of this as we can because the woody stuff's probably definitely harder to find than the uh, steel body cars. So now we're into the madness and there's all this. I did skim a few things. There was a set of sharp heads that we got at the one estate that I pulled aside for myself that I think I need to match up and see if they're better than the set I have. So we'll probably be selling the other set eventually, whichever I choose and Strombergs. Bunch of Strombergs just because we always Oh, that, Mo sign. that Mohawk tire sign. And a Mohawk. Oh, we got that Mo a Mohawk tire sign that we found on top of a um, furnace. Furnace. And we almost missed it. We went back to do a, like a third look in the basement of the house and we and I saw it sitting on top and I was like, oh, what's this piece of tin? Oh, it's an old sign. So that was cool. It's in really good shape. I'm, I don't have a Mohawk tire sign, so I'm probably going to hang it up somewhere in one of the buildings. Um, Bunch of flathead intakes, two and three twos, uh, an old's intake, Edelbrock, uh, heads. This is We mixed all this together from the two different estates that we went to. So I'm not going to tell you every single item where it came from because I can't freaking remember. Um, these are cool. We found these um, in the basement of the house. I do remember this. Um, but I think they might be Buick or GM of some sort. They're like accessory trim rings. They're nice and heavy and they have these really nice clips. Oh, those clips are interesting. So these are cool. Again, some of this stuff is hunches. We, we know like on the stuff we know that these are really cool. If this was 40 Ford ribbed like accessory trim rim, they're really good. So we figured if, even if it's GM and we're not into it, it's still want to save the stuff because somebody's looking for that. So Mike's going to research it, clean it up. If you know what it is, you can hit us up. Um, Iski valve springs. There's a Harman Collins dual coil distributor, which is very complete and pretty nice inside. Mike's favorite thing he bought, he can talk about that. I saw this up in the rafters, and uh, I saw the guide indication in the top here, but it's not that nice. Someone turned it into a spotlight for a boat of There's some kind. C-clamp on there. It's, it was, I picked it up, I was like, wow, this sucker's heavy, and then I realized it had all of this attached. So yeah, it, it's might be a, good. it might be good to take apart and use for parts. Yeah, but. it's a decent bucket, decent trim ring, just Disappointing, once you pull it down, you're like, oh. Bummer. yeah. So, yeah, again, some fin heads, uh, an adapter, bunch of trim here. Uh, got a handful of banjo wheels. We got two, I believe the 36, or maybe the 37. 36, 37, yes. something like that. Uh, banjo wheels, and uh, Buick. I think that's Buick, yes. And then we got, this is a Mercury trim ring, or a horn ring for 46.8, I believe. Um, got some random garnish pieces here and there. There's some reproduction wood that we have to identify what it's for for the 
roof of something, early four. Um, we got some Bob Drake stuff. There was hood ornament for a 39 Deluxe, um, interior garnish. These are pretty cool. This is a Style King. They're, uh, channels. Yeah, they're the little um, channels that go over your door there, but it's pretty neat because they're in the box and it's uh, pretty cool. Um, hood trim. Got a bunch of grills. This grill almost looks like it's new old stock, but I think somebody just cleaned it up because it looks like it's been used. Well, it's got chrome. That's supposed to be chrome, and they oh yeah, and they black. painted it. So somebody, a lot of times you would see this. So back in the day, somebody paid one hundred and thirty-five dollars for this. Thirty-eight Probably. deluxe. So that's that's neat. We're gonna have that. We have a couple thirty-six grills. This was sitting with the the convertible sedan. Gonna probably for the moment hold on to this in case the other one is. I didn't look real close to see how badly damaged the other one is. We're gonna, at the end of this video, take a look at the car after we pull it out, um, or at least give you a quick look of it. Um, 32, I believe, uh, pickup, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. Um, 36 grill, 37 original, I believe, grill. Um, decent shape, good for a driver, but it obviously has some surface rust on it. We got a bunch, you'll see floating around here. We were taking a gamble. The first place we went to had a bunch of like 70s um, NOS Ford parts floating around in the box and Mike and I grabbed as much as we could. Some of it was destroyed because the building was leaking and its new old stock parts were now all rusty <laughs> and the boxes were all rotten. So uh, yeah, we gotta look through it. Some of it might be like Capri, we're not sure yet, but that was one of my guesses. Uh, what, 36 headlight buckets? Oh, yeah. nice. So these this. are missing out of the convertible sedan, so I'm gonna take these home. See, I'm already, I'm still seeing shit. <laughs> uh, we think this is Woody, uh, spare tire bracket. Again, that's just from a hunch, but I believe it is. 39 Deluxe uh, grill trim. Fingers crossed, maybe the car just needs a couple of these. Um, I think this is 38. 38 Deluxe. Deluxe. This looks like it was a reproduction or a re original that was re-chromed. Um, there's a part number, 81A. So this probably is an original because the Drake one usually says Bob Drake oh, yeah. on it. So this might be re-chromed. And it looks like somebody hand painted in there. So pretty cool part. That's nice, somebody's definitely looking for that. Um, is this 38? Yes. Thought so. This is original, also 81A. Bunch of visors. We, for whatever reason, we rarely find visors out in the wild except for swap meets. But we found, I think one's a Fulton and the other two are adjustable ones. I really like that the front one, the white one, the center piece of trim is really cool on it. Um, window regulators out the wazoo, hood ornament, uh, some skirts, steering boxes. We got some more Drake reproduction stuff. This cool wheel bearing service cabinet is kind of neat. Um, Zephyr distributor is kind of cool. We got that. If you don't know that, these were dual coil. So you can see they look like a normal Ford distributor, but they're, this opening is a lot bigger. And then you can see where there's a, the two pickups there. So this is really good. Hot rodders like these because back in the day they were converting these to be dual coil for a V8 car. So uh, Zephyr guys like them, but also they are good for hot rod crowd. Um, we got couple of the used ones and then a, some NOS ones, these Buick trim pieces. So these two are new NOS, those two are used. Um, this was the first property that the guy had like, he must have owned all kinds of different cars because we found literally everything. New, old, new curb, uh, curb feelers, got some tag topper reflectors. This is super cool. This is a fire department tag topper. Um, it's pretty the paint's pretty rough, but it's Need actually in good sh shape. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that or sell that. We may get rid of it, um, I don't know, it doesn't. I have so many tag toppers, and I don't even have the tag toppers on my cars, so probably sell, I don't know. Got a bunch of neat old life license plates. Oh yeah, we got these. Got a whole case of these. These are old oil bottles with the mobile on them. Just neat for a shelf display. They're missing the paper labels, but we'll probably sell them one by one more than likely. Uh, Yantic Fire Department, they're kind of cool. License um, plates out the wazoo. Yeah, and we'll probably be selling like all of this stuff for the most part. This is one of my favorite things we got. Mike found these in the basement of the house from an old used car dealership. You can see how old they are. 1934 Dodge Sedan, 38 Pontiac Sedan, 35 Buick Coupe, 
Plymouth sedan. 37 DeSoto coach. So those are pretty cool. We're gonna be selling those. Hopefully people that have these vehicles will be able to find them and then they can put it in their car to car show. It'd be really neat. Got these cool, uh, family said they didn't know who this guy was, but got these cool body mechanic, Chevrolet approved body mechanic, super service, um, like uh, plaques here or papers. So they're kind of neat. This one says 1938. Both of them say 1938 in the background. So that's pretty darn cool. Oh, yeah. So we thought we'd grab these because for Chevy, you know, fanatic like ourselves, if that was a Ford piece, I'd probably hang it on the wall. Neat. Kelly tire sign, it's kind of rough. It's dated not 47, so that's pretty neat. Probably gonna sell that. I have a really big Kelly tire sign that has some personal, um, personal Stuff. reasons I wanna keep it because I found it and it's one of my old original signs. Um, this is neat, we found this. We weren't too sure about it. Mike's doing some research, but it's, what, potentially from the early 1900s? Yes, early 1900s. It was sitting in a wet corner, so we weren't sure if it was like a 70s thing that's just been wet and aged or if it was actually old. So I yeah. think it's old, so we're doing... Doing some research. research. It will be for sale. It's just, again, we were saving stuff that was getting wet and damaged. Mike found some neat old bottles and fire extinguisher stuff. Uh, got this old can. Got this uh, fuel, pump box. fuel pump box that actually has a bunch of the kits in it still. Yeah, I just, I didn't even bother emptying it. I just grabbed the whole thing. So a bunch of this stuff, if people were always looking for these shelf items, my shop is pretty filled up now. So luckily 99% of this is all getting sold. I'm keeping that one sign and everything else. It's pretty much getting sold. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more we're missing, but we figured we'd go over it. We still got to get the car unloaded. So we're going to show you that. And uh, as always, if there's something that you see in this pile, you can send us an email, irontrapgarage at gmail. Oh, we forgot the one. What did we forget? Oh, Nate's present. I had to bend Mike's arm a little bit, but once he, once he decided it was a good idea, he was all on board. So, and now the wife's on board, right? Good. Uh, we'll see how, when it goes fast, how on board she we'll is, see, but. We'll see, we'll see how it is. But we got this neat old go-kart they had laying around at the first place. We're gonna put an engine on it we're gonna, for, uh, for Mike's son. We're gonna turn this into a little ripper. And maybe probably, can... probably next Christmas. He's still a little timid, but we'll work on it this year and we'll, get it. We'll test drive it. We'll get it running yes. real good, get it all reliable. It does maybe. look like we could fit on it. Thankfully. Maybe we could drive it to get pizza around town. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, we got this thing. This was pretty cool. And uh, we're trying, Nate's gonna get infected pretty early if, yes. he's, if he's able to, uh, or if he takes to it. But every kid needs like his first little go-kart. So we're gonna continue that tradition and put this little jalopy together for him and he can either drive it around my yard or Mike's yard or whatever, but we're gonna take a little test drive on it, I'm sure. <laughs> Just yes. to make sure it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Very large quotations. Yes, so. All right, so Steve and I are gonna take the truck and trailer home. We're gonna unload that, that little dressed up flathead. We'll show you that. And then we'll unload the car. Give you a quick glimpse at that, but we're gonna shoot a video on just really digging into the car in a separate video. So that'll be uh, really fun. So let's uh, take a run down to the shop. Your favorite thing, Moon, to see what's in the trailer. What is it, buddy? What's in there? Come here. Come here, Moon.
right, so after getting all the parts out, getting the car off the trailer, we got the engine out and in the shop. I don't really think we showed the engine very much in the last, in the video where we got the car, because the car was more exciting, honestly. Um, but we found this engine sitting in the back of the shop. The shop had gotten like flooded at some point, and luckily the Ford that was in there was sitting high enough, it didn't get water in it, but the building was obviously very damp for a while. And we found this engine under a ripped up tarp. It got damp, you can see the back of the generators. That's probably the worst. Worst part of it. But you can see, we started looking over there and it's like a kick ass hot rod engine that was pulled out of a car and just put away. Now, like all flatheads, we have no idea what it was pulled. It could have been that it was cracked and overheating. Could have been that it's worn out. Could have been that it was a good engine. Somebody put a small block in. It's hard to say, but for us, it's got the right stuff. It's got needle, finned off and hauser speed equipment on it. Um, cool air cleaners, and then the other giveaway is it has this Harman Collins um, dual coil distributor. So the Offenhauser stuff is pretty common. Guys would put that on stock engines, but this thing being all dressed out like it is, make, and that distributor makes me think that it might have been uh, warmed up potentially, because why put a Harman Collins dual coil on a stock engine? It's kind of a little more advanced of a project than just bolting some stuff on, and you're getting into something that was a little more money, so if you think of the 50s and 60s, a, a kid that had almost no money wasn't gonna go to that length. He's just gonna dress the engine up and, and drive it around or put a little single to two, bar two carb adapter on it. So, it's stuck, of course, typical. They get stuck just sitting in a nice garage, nonetheless a garage that took on water and sat damp under a tarp and broke for a very long time. So, this is another one. We got another one over there from Jersey. That stuck, same kind of thing. We gambled a little bit on it. I basically paid what, like I always tell everybody in the videos, I just added up what the speed parts are worth on the engine. I basically paid right around that for the whole engine. If we get it freed up and it's a good engine, we won. If we didn't, we won't lose money. We'll just break even and- And we'll Matt got two more Strombergs. And I got two Stromberg 97s that we'll steal <laughs> off there. If the engine doesn't run, if we can make You're it gonna run. steal them off right away. No, no, no. If the engine, if we can get the engine to run, we'll rebuild those cars and put them on and have a really great engine to put in a car. But again, like we say, I wanted to save this stuff. It obviously sitting back in a damp garage is not doing any good. If we didn't save it, who knows what might happen to it in the future. So even if the engine's junk, we save some neat old speed equipment that could be cleaned up put on other cars and put back into the world. All right, so we got the car all unloaded, had to use the tractor because all the tires are flat and torn and crappy. So um, we got everything out and we're kind of just in the middle of the driveway. Most of the wheels actually rolled when we were dragging it out of the building and also dragging it now. A lot of the wheels were starting to spin. So fingers crossed, we're gonna be able to get them broken free. We have a bunch of spare like used tires that will fit these wheels laying around. I think we're gonna do some switching of that first and foremost, get the thing rolling. We're gonna shoot all that in a future video, but I figured I'd walk around the car real quick and show you guys. So obviously it's a four door, it's a convertible sedan, which is a uh, pretty unusual model. Um, and that's why it kind of interested me, anything convertible or coupe, even though it may look rough like this, those are the ones that are definitely more worth going after than a just typical four door humpback or something like that. So. The car is pretty unusual. You can see that actually inside, once we cleaned all the insulation out from the last video, um, if you look down in, the floors are all in it. Back here especially, you can see the floors, while they're pretty pitted and crusty, they look fairly solid. The doors are actually quite solid in this car. Like you look in the bottom of the door here. I couldn't see any of this because the thing was sunken up to almost the doors, but it's not all rotten in it, which is nice. Um, windows are all present. Um, it is missing some parts that we may have found when we were digging around, like garnish molding. Some of the window pieces were in the car. We found some dashboards at the estate when we were picking. So one of these couple of dashboards may work in the car, not sure yet, but we need to get a dash bolted in it. A uh, bunch of that stuff done, we'll, we'll do in a future video. You can see the top irons and everything are still in the car. Um, the trunk is probably the worst, worst part of the car. Uh, I think the roof and stuff was leaking a little bit there. It was sitting, it was towards the back of the building. So that did not fare as well as the rest of the car. But overall, it is actually pretty solid. Um, it's not like smashed up or anything. You can see the whole black paint for whatever reason on the doors is shiny. I don't know why. Hard to say because the door pins are half knocked out. So who knows, somebody might have got different doors for this at some point in its life or painted them. I'm not sure. Um, the hood took the worst of the damage. The 
building, uh, the garage door was kind of broken slash open and it was kind of like raining and leaking into here. There were some raccoons that were um, using this as their, as their potty for a while. So this edge of the hood is, is pretty toast right here. Um, luckily these hoods aren't possible to find. They're all the same. So we have to find another hood potentially depending on what we do with the car. But for now, uh, I'm just happy to get the car home all in one piece and uh, get all the parts unloaded. It was a really, really fun trip. Um, and we're going to take you along on a journey of just digging into this car a little further and see what we find, see if we maybe get it to run. We don't know, but we'll be doing that in some upcoming videos because that's one of my favorite things is pull something out and see if you can get the thing to run and drive and uh, show you guys the process along the way as we always do. So thank you guys for following along. Let me know what you think of the uh, car and all the parts that we dug out in our latest adventure. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.